suppose we have two real numbers x and y and x will be the greater it doesn't really matter let's get the arithmetic mean and the geometric mean and we're going to set x to the am and y the gm we keep going forever until we hit a limit and that limit is called the arithmetic geometric mean okay seems straightforward let's see an example 4 and 16 okay we know their arithmetic mean geometric mean 8 and 10 they keep going and eventually we will converge to a value but as you can see it converges rather fast. In fact, it is quadratic convergence. If we look here, this is well more or less one digit of of uh, precision. This is two digits of precision here. Uh, and here, this is more or less five digits of precision. Here, I believe we have eleven digits of precision here. Uh, yes. Um, and then it's just the same and this is quadratic convergence because the digits double roughly every iteration and this is very good because we can find the arithmetic mean sorry the arithmetic geometric mean very fast as you can see after what one two three four five six iterations it's already done for uh for double precision values. And even for quadruple precision values, it's going to be done here. And for octuple, it's going to be here. And so on and so forth. And uh, well, you really wouldn't even need that much precision. For most cases, double precision will be enough. But why is it even useful? Well, we'll find out. One of the applications of the AGM is the Gauss-Lautron algorithm. This is the fastest algorithm for calculating pi. I'm not going to show the proof. That will be for maybe another time. Okay, we start with four variables. With one, uh, root two over two, a quarter, and one. Uh, I don't know why it's T and P. And A and B will converge to the A, M, and G, M, and T, M, P will help out. And T will become this value, and P will just double every iteration. Okay, so then pi will be A plus B, the quantity squared, over 40, 40 being in the denominator. So these are the five values so far. Okay. And uh, well, at first it's not even close to pi. And then in the first iteration we get three correct digits. Okay. Then we're already at uh, ten correct digits. And well, we're at all the correct digits now. So it's pretty fast, isn't it? Supercomputers will use this algorithm to calculate pi to millions. Uh, Billions, I think even trillions. Actually, I think now it, uh, we're at quadrillions of digits. So this is definitely a useful algorithm. So logarithms are one of the applications of the arithmetic geometric mean. And this is how you do it. We take the reciprocal of the number, take it to the fourth power, and uh, use the theta functions we let x equals theta 3 squared and y equals theta 2 squared of the fourth power of the reciprocal then we just take the arithmetic geometric mean of y and x and uh, multiply by 4 and then pi divided by that is the logarithm uh, obviously it won't work if you put 0 in here you can also calculate pi through the gauss legendre algorithm that was mentioned before. But this will calculate pi, not pi, sorry, 
the logarithm of any complex number in quadratic convergence. We can calculate logarithms, but logarithms of complex numbers are the same as just arctangent of a coordinate, meaning we can calculate arctangent, and therefore we can calculate arc cosine and arc sine as well. With the inverses of the trig function, we can use Newton reversion to calculate their inverses, which would just be the normal trig functions and also the exponential function, which is the inverse of the natural logarithm. Which means all the elementary functions can be calculated using the arithmetic geometric mean.